Hi and welcome to Projects 360. This video is going to be a demonstration about who Projects 360 is and what we offer to the integration, uh, custom integration industry. Uh, Projects 360 is the custom integration industry's end-to-end -end management solution software. We're a software as a service. We manage your entire project. Uh, from the sales process all the way into service and full inventory management. We have a mobile friendly interface and we have mobile apps for both Apple and Android. And basically you, your team will have access to the software um, from any device and anywhere at any time. Little background about myself. My name is Doug Greenwald. I'm the CEO and founder of Projects 360. I've been in the custom integration industry for 27 years um, and still actively own a custom integration company in Scottsdale, Arizona that I started in 2001. I built Projects 360 out of a need for myself. I was looking for a good project management software solution uh, for our industry and looked at a few different platforms and just really couldn't find something that was really geared towards our industry. So I already had the software company. So we decided to build the project management portion of Projects 360 for my company and kind of went from there. Uh, it helps manage different processes that I've created over the years to help my business run more efficiently and fluently. The importance of processes is everything. I mean, it, it helps your business stand out by having good business uh, workflows. The software is designed to help manage your different business processes, which then increases your bottom line, reduces stress for your team because things are more organized and uh, flow a lot more fluently. So this demonstration is going to kind of cover the whole workflow of Projects 360 from the sales process to generating a proposal to uh, all the project management, you know, creating work orders, creating invoices, scheduling, time tracking, all the way into service. We're going to cover our inventory management system that is built specifically for our industry and then into our custom reporting uh, software portion of the portion of the software. That being said, I'm going to get started here and we're going to start out with the sales process because that's where everything begins. So right here we're on our sales CRM dashboard and here you can see what's in your overall pipeline. You can see what's been added to your pipeline in the last 30 days, what's been won or lost in the last 30 days, what's been won or lost year to date. You can also see what's in each individual salesperson's pipeline, and that's clickable to go into. When a new lead comes in, you'll go over to People. You'll then go over to the cog here and go to Add Person. Here's where you'll fill out all the information. If there's a company associated uh, with them, you can select from an existing, com existing company or add a new one right on the fly. You can assign your salesperson. You can create different sources in the settings to track where your business is coming from. You can also create different statuses. You can create different tags. You can also create custom fields. So any additional information you want you or your team to gather, you can do that. They'll hit save. It'll then save the person into your database. We have a nice search feature in the software platform where you can search by name, by company, by address. When you click on the person, it opens what we call the client profile page. And here you can see all the information that you entered. Over time, you'll be able to see any associated records with this person. So any proposals, any projects, any work orders, or any invoices. And all those are clickable to go into. Also, during the sales process, your salespeople can create activities for themselves. An activity can be anything. It could be, you know, to do a follow-up call, to send a follow-up email, to schedule an appointment. You can see what's been completed by what's green and what hasn't been by what's tan. And they can check things off as they do finish. Also, if a salesperson has an activity or even a calendar event uh, due on any given day, they'll get an automated email early in the morning called the daily rundown, which is basically a list of their agenda for that day so things don't fall through the cracks. Over here, you can see any deals associated with this person. And a deal is an opportunity in our software. And you can add a deal right here. 
Over here, you can see all the information that you entered in the custom fields. Over here, we have a notes section, so you can add notes. And when you do add notes, it does stamp the author and the date and time that note was added. When you click and go into the deal, you can see what the estimated deal value is, what your expected close date is, how long this deal's been aging, all the information about the deal. You can actually create custom fields and deals also. We have a separate notes section inside deals to keep things more organized. And over here, the salespeople can upload any documents that they gather during the sales process to keep everything nicely organized. But now let's say you've met with the customer and you're ready to generate a proposal. Inside the deal here, there's a Create Proposal button. If you click on that, it'll pull all the information into our proposal tool. If you do need to edit anything, you can do so by clicking on it. If not, you're going to select who's generating this proposal. You can also create pricing rules in our proposals. So if you go to the blue cog right here and go to Add Pricing Rule, you can create different pricing rules uh, templates in uh, the settings. So basically how the pricing rule rule works, it's a percentage, positive or negative, um, that you can create. So like maybe discounts or maybe how you calculate miscellaneous parts. So like in this case with the miscellaneous parts of 3%, I can decide what that 3% applies to or how it's calculated, either by labor, equipment, or both. And I can select that and hit OK. And it creates that pricing rule in this proposal. And you can have as many pricing rules in a proposal as you wish. After that, you can go and select the tax rate that applies to this proposal. Also in the settings, you can create different payment schedules. Uh, you can create as many different payment schedules as you'd like, select the one that best applies. And how our payment schedules work, they're a percentage of the total, and you can actually progress invoice off these payment schedules uh, once the proposal is approved. After that, you'll go to the tab called Locations. And here you can, uh, in the settings, you can create all the locations that you use on a regular basis and simply drag over to the right the ones that apply to this particular uh, proposal. And you can just bring them all uh, over that are necessary. If you have a very specific location that you don't want to add to your database but just want to add it for the proposal, just go to the blue cog here and you can add a one-off. When you're done, you can actually drag and drop the order you want these locations to appear on the proposal to the customer. After that, you'll go to the tab called Systems. This is a filtering feature that we created. You could create whatever kind of systems you want, like you could have audio video, you could have control systems, you could have televisions, um, and you can again arrange the order that you want these to appear. And we'll get more into what this exactly does in a little bit. After that, you'll hit the tab called Contracts, and in the settings, you can create different types of contracts for the different types of work you do, and select and save. Same thing with scopes of work, you can create different templated scopes of work, and select the one that best applies, and save it. After that, you'll go to the orange cog here, and go to Build Proposal, and that'll take you into the Proposal Builder itself, and we can add product a variety of different ways to a proposal. First off, you can build your own local product database in our product manager here. And then in the proposal here under the search feature, you can search that product manager. So maybe I'm looking for a Sony XBR. I can just type in what I know. It'll bring back everything that's related. I can click on the location to expand it, grab the product and drag it to the system, which in this case would be televisions. When you're setting up product, you can add accessories to it. So for instance, this television has both a fixed mount and an arm mount attached to it. Just to remind you, you need some kind of mounting um, bracket for the television, and you can decide which one you want. Like in this case, maybe I just want the fixed, so I can turn off the arm and hit OK. And it'll add both the television and the arm mount to the proposal. And you can have as many accessories to a product as you wish. There is no limitation on that. Also, when you're setting up product, you can add labor phases and labor hours to it. So, for instance, in the settings, you're going to create all your different labor phases that you do, like pre-wire, trim, final, and you're going to put your hourly rate to it. And then you can select the labor phase that applies and how many hours it takes to install this product. And when you bring the product over, it also brings over the labor phase and labor hours. Another option to bring in product is we are integrated with Portal. 
So if you have a subscription to Portal, you can actually search P Portal's database. So if I'm looking for a crest run and I know it's a DM piece, and maybe that's all I know, just type in what you know. It'll reach out to Portal and bring back everything that's related. You can then click on the product. It'll bring over the product image, the manufacturer, the model, the description, and pricing. And you can hit Add to Queue. And you can see in the background here how it added it to the queue. You could sit here and add as many items to the queue as you wish. When you're done, just close it out. And now I can add this product to the proposal. So maybe I want this in the equipment closet and then under control system. The first time you bring a product over from Portal, you will get this yellow warning. What this is telling you is that there's no labor phase or labor hours associated to this product yet. But that's not a big deal. Just click on the manufacturer, go to labor, select the labor phase you want this for this. Maybe it's final. And then how long it takes to install. Maybe this is an hour. And then if you hit this little global button down here, it'll save that product to the local database and it's all ready to use for the next person. So a nice easy way to build your local database also. And then finally, you can create packages. So if you have your favorite surround sound system or favorite conference room that you like to do all the time, you can build it once, select the location you want to put it in, grab it, to drag it to the system, which in this case is audio video. And here is the complete surround sound system that I built earlier. And you can drag and drop the order you want product to appear on the proposal to the customer. If you didn't need something for this particular proposal from this package, just go to the cog here and go to the delete the trash can and delete it. Also a feature we have in our proposals are called cloning. So you can clone an entire proposal, but also let's say for instance, I need these Sonance VP82s in mul multiple locations. I can go to the cog here and go to clone and I can select the system, which is audio video. And then I can select the different locations I want to clone it to and hit OK, and it now cloned those speakers to those other locations. So a nice shortcut for to quickly and accurately build your proposals. But now let's say you're done building the proposal and you want to generate the final proposal for the customer. Simply go to the cog here and go to Generate Proposal. We allow you to filter the proposals by category, by location, by manufacturer, or by system. I always like location. We also have a bunch of advanced options, like do you want to show product images? Do you want to show line item pricing? Do you want to break labor out? Whatever you want, you can select and uh, generate the proposals the way you want them to look. Also, here are those systems that we talked about earlier. Like I mentioned, this is a filtering feature. So let's say, for instance, you wanted to build a proposal just showing the items for the, to the customer that are under control system. You could turn off audio, video, and televisions, or any kind of combination of those. Also, you can create your own color scheme to match your brand. You can upload as many different types of cover images and select the one that best applies. And then you could download a printable version, or we do have an email feature that you can email a link to the customer. When they click on the link, it pulls up the proposal, has the color scheme that you selected, all the client information, the cover image you selected. This would be your company logo and information. Here's the scope of work we selected. And in this case, we decided to break everything out by location with product images and line item pricing. So I have all that here. Here are those speakers I cloned to those other rooms. I decided to break labor out by phase. Here's that uh, miscellaneous parts uh, pricing rule that I created and it did all the math. Here's the total. Here's the payment schedule I selected and it did all the math. Here's the contracted. And then the client's got two options down here. They can request revisions where a little box pops up and they can type in the changes they want and they can send it to you. Or what we're all hoping for, that everything's good, they can do an electronic signature in the signature box, hit approved, it'll send you a notification. But then also here in the software, in the proposal under revisions, you can see the date and time it was approved. So now that the proposal was approved, we can actually create a project because it's a real deal. So we can go to the cog right from the, here in the proposal and go to create project. It then pulls all that information over into our project management side of the software. If you do need to edit anything, you can do so right from here. 
If not, you can select who your project manager is going to be. You can select the status, like is it something that's going on this week? Is it a couple weeks out? Is it in progress? Is it delayed? And you can custom name those statuses what you wish. Another feature we have are called categories. Again, this is a filtering feature. You can create as many different types of categories as you wish. Like it could be builders you work with, developments you're working on, businesses you're working with, whatever makes the most sense for your business. You'll then hit OK. It'll send a notification to that project manager that a new project was created for them. It's going to ask you to push the proposal over along with the labor phase and labor hours. And it creates what we call a project details page. And this is going to be the dashboard for the life of this project. And I'm going to walk you through all this. So first off, think of a project as a location and not a client. There's a client associated to a project, of course. But if you looked at a flow chart of how our industry works, the client is on top. And then underneath the client, they could have multiple projects going on. They might own multiple homes. It might be a business with multiple locations. And that's exactly how our software is designed. You can associate as many proposals to a project as you wish. Like here's the parent proposal and I got the change orders underneath it. Also from here, your project managers and your technicians can view the proposals to see what the kind of the scope of work is. So they can click to open the proposal. It'll ask them how they want to view it and they can select that. And it pulls up the proposal for them with everything except pricing. And then they can filter the proposal of however way they want to view it, either by location, by phase, by brand, by model number, or by system. Also, right from here, your project managers are the ones that know when they need product either ordered or allocated for this job. And they can then highlight the product that they need either ordered or allocated. And they can go to the cog right here and go to add to product request. It'll update the status to requested, and then it sends this product to our product request page in our inventory system for the inventory manager to see everything um, that's filtered by project that needs to be ordered or allocated. And we'll go through that product request page in a little bit. Also, when you push that proposal over, it pushed all the labor phases and labor hours over into our time tracking module. So you can actually track time against what was bid, versus actual and you can see instantly if a phase is going over budget because it'll turn red and this is a live view this is uh, all live right here over here you can see all the work orders that have ever been created for the life of this project and there's two types of work orders in our system and we can filter by both of them right here we have project work orders which are the work orders created during the build of the project and then we have service work orders which are the service calls after the fact you can click to open any work order right from the project here to see the details. And we'll get more into work orders in a little bit because they do do a lot. Another feature we have in our system uh, software is called custom checklists. We allow you to create whatever kind of checklist you want. Like you could have a pre-wire checklist, a trim checklist, a final checklist. When you click and expand it, you can see what's been completed and what hasn't been. People can check things off as they do finish, and it does stamp who checked it off and when for accountability, and it updates the percentage of completion of that checklist. Over here is a feature called Discussions. You can create a discussion about this project right from the project. To create a new discussion, just hit the plus symbol. You can give it a title, you can describe it, and then you can select who all needs to partake in this discussion. They'll get a notification with the link to the discussion. When they click on it, it opens the discussion and they can reply to it. So it creates a nice threaded conversation and stamps who replied and when. So instead of having a bunch of random emails and text messages everywhere, you have nice threaded conversations about the project right in the project. Over here, you can see you can create one-off tasks. So the majority of your tasks for your technicians and everything are going to be done inside of work orders that we're going to cover in a little bit. But there's always a need to create a one-off task. An example of a one-off task might be to create a task for the office manager to invoice for the deposit. When you create a task in our system, you'll give it a title, you'll assign it, you'll describe it, 
you'll give it a due date. They'll get a notification that a new task was created for them. And then also you can set up in the notification system that you get notified anytime the status changes of one of your tasks. Over here's uh, our cloud storage. So you can upload any documents that are related to this project and create folders to keep everything nicely organized. So floor plans and engineering, pre-wire photos, system programs, whatever you want. And that way, everything that's related to this project lives right inside the project where it belongs so everybody knows where everything is. Over here, you can see all the invoices that were created for this project. And there's two types of invoices in the software. We have those progress invoices that we talked about in the payment schedule of the proposal. But then you can also create service invoices from service work orders that I'm going to show you in a couple minutes. Over here, we're tied to Google Maps so you can see where the project is. As this project ages and goes into service mode, you can create service repair tickets for product as it needs to go in for repair. And that way you've got a log of any product that's ever gone in for repair for the life of this project. We have a general notes section for notes. And here you can see all the open purchase orders related to this project. Then another neat feature we have, if you go to the cog here and go to forms, we allow you to create whatever kind of custom form you want. Like you could have create a network form that houses all the client's network information, their SSID, their different access points. You could create a system design form that when you click on the processor, you can see what's in the different COM ports, the different relays, how the audio distribution's laid out, how the video distribution's laid out. Whatever you want, you can create as many different custom forms as you wish. And then when you're creating a project, it's going to ask you what forms and what checklists would you like to associate to this particular project. Then another feature we have is if you're using inventory, you can go to the cog here and go to installed products. This generates a live report of any product you've ever installed for the life of this project. And it shows you how the product was delivered, either via work order or invoice, the quantity, the product itself, the cost, if it's a serial tracked product, the serial number, and who installed it and when. Really helpful for your records uh, for doing RMAs as, as things need to go in for repair. Going into work orders, <clears throat> we created a nice work order dashboard for your project managers uh, to make their life a lot easier. So right from here, they can create a work order for any project and any employee. And then they can filter the work orders by the different statuses work orders have, which is not scheduled, scheduled, in progress, completed, invoiced, canceled, or archived. When you click and go inside of a work order, you can see what type of work order it is. Is it a project or service? You can give a work order a title and put hours to a work order because there's a clock in button right here for the technicians. When they click that, it already knows the project and the work order they're on. All they got to do is grab the phase they're working on and hit start time. And now they're tracking time against the project, the work order, and the phase. And you have a live running clock right here. Over here, you can see who's all scheduled and for when for this work order. And you can schedule as many people to a work order and a work order for as many days as you want. There is no limitation on that like there are in some platforms. But then to, and we'll get more into scheduling in a couple minutes. But now to add the tasks of what the technicians need to do, we can do that a variety of different ways. If we go to the blue cog right here and go to add line item to work order, the first option is if there was a proposal involved, you can find the proposal and select it. It'll pull the proposal up in front of you by location. You can check the box next to the um, items that you want to add to the work order. And then you can go add to work order. And it brings over the product along with the location so the technicians know where the work needs to be done and the labor phases and labor hours that were in the proposal for accurate time tracking. Another option is you can actually search your product database. So if you want to look something up in your product database, you can do so and select it. It'll pull up an image and description to make sure you're grabbing the right product. And then you can even select the labor phase if you want and put how many hours it should take them to install it and add that to the work order. And it brings over the product along with the labor phase and labor hours associated to it. Another option is 
your custom, remember your custom checklists? You can actually search your checklist library and bring one of those in. Or if this was a service call, you just want to type in what they need to do, just go to general item, and then you can type in what you need the technicians to do. And you could even put a labor phase to it. And you even can put on even how long it should take them and hit add to work order. And now it added that line item to the work order. And then also, if you're using our inventory system, you can associate transfers to a work order or bring things in from your various warehouses. So lots of different options there. Also on our work orders, you can add notes by line item. So if there's some special instructions that you need to relay to the technicians, or if the technicians were having an issue in the field, they can add a note to that line item, and it shows that there's a note to that line item. And if the technicians were having an issue, they could even take a photo of what's going on, and they could upload the photo. They could select uh, it, because we allow attachments by line item. They can check things off as they do finish installing it and completing it, so you know what's been completed and what hasn't been on this work order. And just like the other checklist that stamps who checked it off and when for accountability, if this was a service work order and something needed to go in for repair, you can create a service repair ticket right from the work order. Just go up to the cog and go to repair item. You can put in the RMA, the tracking number, the date you're shipping it out, and you can set a reminder for one of these time frames that if you don't get it back, it'll send you a notification to follow up with that manufacturer so things don't fall through the cracks. To clock out of a work order, just simply hit the clock out button and hit stop time, and that'll clock you out of the work order. Also on our work orders, you can get electronic signatures. If this was a service work order and you wanted to create an invoice for that service call, you can do that right from the work order. Just go to the orange, uh, blue cog right here and go to create new invoice. It'll pull all the client information over into our invoice tool. It has your company logo and information. And there's a little clock right here. If you click on that, it'll show you all the unbilled time against that work order. All you have to do is check the box and hit OK. And it'll bring that labor into the invoice. And it knows for final labor, you charge $85 an hour. And it did all the math for you, so you didn't have to calculate that. And if you have to add anything else, just go to the cog right here and go to Add Line Item. and you got a bunch of different options. First option is that work order. If you wanted to bring uh, different line items in from that work order, you can select and hit OK. And it brings in the pricing and labor, so they don't need to know that. Another option is you can search your product database. You can manually type product in, manually type labor in, or bring things in from your various warehouses. So again, lots of different options. You can select the tax rate that applies. And then also on our invoices, you can get electronic signatures. And then we do integrate with QuickBooks, both online and desktop. So you can send this over to QuickBooks and receive payment just like you normally do. Going into scheduling, if we go to our calendar here, you can see a list of all your employees up here. You can click any one of them to see what their utilization is for the week. Also, off to the left right here, you can see all the unscheduled service and all the unscheduled project work orders so they don't fall through the cracks. You can view the calendar by month, by week, by day, or by list. And then also, we have some more advanced filtering. If you go to the cog here, if you have a dedicated service department and want to just see your service calendar, just click on service, and it'll just show you your unscheduled service work orders and your service calendar. Same thing with production. Uh, you can just see your production calendar. To schedule one of these unscheduled work orders, just grab it, drag and drop it to the day and time you want it to start. It loads that day and time in there for you automatically. You can uh, color code things if you wish. You can schedule individuals. Or in our software, you can create teams and schedule teams if you wish. When you're done, you can just close out of here. It'll load that event into the calendar. Once it's done loading the event into the calendar, if you need to uh, uh, adjust it, you can drag and drop it to different times. You can uh, drag and drop it longer, move it to different days, whatever you want, and it automatically updates. And then also, we have some more advanced filtering. If you go to filter by, you can filter by employee, 
by project, and by date also. Going into time tracking. So we talked about time tracking against a work order. But as you know, we don't always have a work order. So we have this enter time section where you can just grab the pro project you're working on and the phase you're working on and hit start time. And now you're tracking time against that project and phase. And then we have this currently clocked in view where you can see a list of all your employees, the project they're clocked into, the phase, the date and time they clocked in, and a live running clock right here. And if you do need to clock them out, you can clock them out right from here. You can filter your service projects uh, by what's in and out of warranty here. And then going into inventory, when you go to warehouses here, we allow you to create as many different warehouses as you wish. So in this example, I'm showing a main warehouse and then each vehicle as a warehouse. When you click to go into a warehouse, a live dashboard is calculated for you. And on that dashboard, it tells you the total number of products in that warehouse. Also, when you're setting up product, you can set up a minimum and a maximum you want on hand and a warning of when you want to be notified to order more. So here you can see what's in warning or low stock mode. And this is clickable to get the details to create purchase orders. You can see the cost value and the retail value of your warehouse. You can see the last time you did a cycle count and if there was an adjustment on that cycle count. You can see any incoming and outgoing transfers. You can see all your open purchase orders and you can filter them by draft, what's been sent to the supplier, what's been partially shipped, what's been shipped and what's been received. But remember earlier when we were talking about when the project manager was requesting product to be ordered or allocated, it sent it to this product request page here in inventory for your, pro, uh, for your inventory manager. And it sorts everything by project, so you get, it's all filtered out by project. And you can use the search feature to look at a specific project. It tells you the product that was requested, what, if anything, is on hand, the amount that was requested, if it's been sent to the purchase order queue to get ordered yet, if it has been ordered yet, and then if it's been allocated and what's still needed. So for instance, in the Sony television, I have six on hand and I only need one. So nothing needs to be ordered. I just need to allocate one of the six I have. To do that, just click on it, go to allocation. Because this is a serial track device, I have all the serial numbers broke out. I can select which serial number I want to allocate to this particular project and close out of here. And now it updated that Sony television. The on hand went down to five from six. Even though you physically have six, what we're doing here is virtually staging it. And now it's saying I have one of one. And I put a little check mark here saying you're good to go. You have everything you need for this particular um, line item in this uh, project. If you didn't have it, like on, these, uh, on this Integra piece, you can highlight it. And you have a few different options. If you go to the cog here, you can send it to the PO queue uh, to uh, get a PO created for it. You can create a PO right from here or add it to an existing PO. So lots of different options there. So about a week before this project is going to be going out, your project manager is going to want to be seeing all green check marks here. Then the morning of uh, that it's going out, they're going to go to the cog here and go to fulfill request, which is basically creating a transfer. And they're going to create a transfer to the vehicle warehouse that's taking it out. The technician that's in charge of that vehicle warehouse will see an incoming transfer. They'll open it. It'll have all the product along with serial numbers and quantity listed there. They'll verify that they have all the product and accept the transfer. And then if you recall, in our work orders, you can associate a transfer to a work order. And once that, uh, if you associated that, you can go back into that work order and it'll auto populate all the product into that work order. So when the technicians check things off that it's been completed, it actually delivers it to the customer themselves. But another scenario that happens is let's pretend this project got delayed. And let's say I didn't have any more Sony televisions and I needed it for another project. I can click on here and deallocate that Sony television from here. So I go back into allocations. I can deallocate it. And now it frees that up. So now it updated the Sony television back to six on hand and showing I need one for this project so I don't forget, but now I can go into this other project and allocate it. Also, you can see all the product you have on hand 
across all your warehouses or select certain ones. It has the cost value and the retail value of all your warehouses. By line item, you can see where, which warehouses the product's in and where in the warehouses. You can see all the product you've ever installed across all your projects here. We also have a product aging report to make sure you're cycling your old inventory. So if you want to see everything that's come in, let's say before January, you can select that and it'll show you all that. And then finally, we have a very detailed custom reporting system. So if you go to reporting, go to custom reporting and go to report builder, you can build a report for any section of the software. You can select the section, then you can select the fields you want in this report. So you can have it uh, view the way you want it to. And then down below here are all the filters. So you can apply the filters depending on what kind of report you're looking uh, to achieve. And then hit Get Report. It'll generate the report for you. It's exportable to CSV and Excel. And you can also save it to your saved report so you don't have to rebuild it all the time. And then you can do the same thing for charts. We have all kinds of different charts you can build. Select the chart. Apply the filters and hit draw chart and it'll draw the chart and you can save that to your favorites and have that for your records. And that's a 30,000 foot view um, of Projects 360. And if you would like to learn more, we can do a private demonstration um, for your team or you can just uh, contact uh, us at uh, Projects 360 uh, dot com, or you can email me directly at Doug at projects360.com, or we have an 800 number here uh, that you can contact us. But I want to thank you for your time to watch our video and learn a little bit about Projects 360, and look forward to hearing from you soon. Thank you, and have a great day.